In Season 6 of Game of Thrones, Arya says she wants to go west of Westeros to see the edge of the world. West of Westeros is where all the maps stop. No one knows what's beyond the Sunset Sea, but some have tried to find out. One of Arya's ancestors, Brandon the Shipwright, sailed west across the Sunset Sea, and he was never seen again. His tomb in Winterfell is empty. Some crazy ironborn on the island of Lonely Light believe there's a paradise in the west, a land without winter or want, but all they've ever found is boundless grey sea. One of Daenerys' ancestors, Queen Rhaenys Targaryen, planned to fly her dragon across the sea, but she and her dragon died before she could try. So the Sunset Sea is a mystery, but there's one person who went further west than anyone else. 250 years ago, Alyssa Farman was the daughter of the Lord of Fair Isle, an island off the Westerlands by the Sunset Sea. Alyssa was kind of like Arya, a rebellious, wild-spirited girl. She was an archer and a singer, loved horses and dogs, but her great love was sailing. She spent most of her childhood on ships. As a teenager, she sailed her own boat, voyaging north to Bear Island and south to the Arbor. But her dream was to sail west and find strange lands beyond the Sunset Sea. Alyssa's brother, Andrew, married Raina Targaryen, a widowed queen of two different kings. It was weird that a queen would marry into a minor noble family like the Farmans, and Andrew was a pretty unimpressive husband. Raina didn't seem that into him. She was closer with Alyssa. It's hinted that Raina was gay, and that she and Alyssa were in love. So, for a year, Raina and Alyssa and friends lived on Fair Isle. They were the centre of court life, and went on joyrides on Raina's dragon, Dreamfire. But the Lord of Fair Isle got sick of Raina dominating his island, and of her dragon eating his sheep, so he asked her to leave. He wanted Alyssa to stay and get married, but like Arya, Alyssa didn't want to marry some lord, so she left home with Raina. For a month, they mooched off the Lannisters at Casterly Rock, and enjoyed the hospitality of the wealthiest house in Westeros. But it turned out, shockingly, that the Lannisters were scheming, so Raina and co left the Rock and toured the Westerlands and Riverlands for a while. As the young daughter of a minor noble family, Alyssa got to travel across Westeros with her love, the Dragon Queen. But eventually, Raina settled on Dragonstone, the Targaryen island, and Alyssa wasn't happy there. She wanted to build a ship and return to her wide western seas. Raina refused, and their relationship broke down. So Alyssa left Dragonstone, and on her way out, she stole three of Raina's dragon eggs. Alyssa went to Pentos, then Bravos, and sold the eggs to the Sea Lord of Bravos. She used the money to build the ship of her dreams, the Sun Chaser, designed for deep waters and long voyages. Alyssa planned to sail west. The Targaryens, meanwhile, lost their shit. The theft of their eggs meant that someone outside their family could get dragons, which is like someone outside your country getting nukes. They hope that without the heat of Dragonstone, the eggs will turn to stone. That way, some spicemonger in Pentos will only have three very costly stones. Hundreds of years later, in Book 1 of Game of Thrones, Illyrio Mepatis, a cheesemonger of Pentos, gives Daenerys three dragon eggs, which he says have turned to stone. Three stone eggs from a monger in Pentos. The language is the same, hinting that Danny's eggs are the same eggs that Alyssa stole hundreds of years ago. Daenerys' whole story might not have happened if it weren't for Alyssa Farman. But author George Martin does say that this is meant to be ambiguous, not certain. But Alyssa built her ship, the Sun Chaser, and from Bravos she sailed down the narrow sea, dodging pirates, went around dawn, and came to Old Town, the city of the Citadel and the High Tower. Alyssa knew that the Targaryens were hunting her for their eggs, but she needed a crew, people who believed in her mission to find new lands in the West. Which was difficult, because many people believed that the world just ends in the West with walls of fire and boiling seas, or black fogs that go on forever. But the maesters, and author George Martin, say that the world of Game of Thrones is round, like ours. So the West must eventually connect to the Far East, to the lands of Yi Ti and Ashai. 
a western trade route to these places would be worth a fortune in silks and spices. But Alyssa's dream was bigger than money. She believed that the world was far larger and far stranger than the maesters imagine. She envisioned new undiscovered lands in between Westeros and Essos, with sundering rivers and plains, green islands, strange beasts, and golden cities beneath strange stars. Westeros is kind of like Britain, Essos is like Europe and Asia, and Sothorios like Africa, so maybe there's a continent to the west like America. Alyssa hoped to find it. As she looked for a crew, Eustace and Norman Hightower came to question her, but Alyssa convinced them to join her mission, adding their ships to hers. She gathered a crew, and just as the Targaryens were closing in, Alyssa left Old Town with three ships and sailed west. Three years later, one ship returned. Eustace and his ship came ragged and exhausted back to Old Town, and Eustace told the story of Alyssa's voyage. He said that at first it was smooth sailing, but a month in, they were hit by storms. Norman's ship was struck by lightning and sank. Some sailors said they saw a kraken. But Alyssa and Eustace's ships survived, and they found land, three small islands further to the west than any known land. Alyssa named the islands Aegon Visenya and Rhaenys. So Rhaenys Targaryen, who died before she got to fly west, had an island named for her in the far sunset sea. Alyssa explored her new islands and found new spices, pink fruits, and huge grey lizards with venomous bites. Alyssa wanted to sail further west to discover more new land, but Eustace and his crew were scared and turned back home. Eustace spent a year stuck on Sothorios, and his crew almost all died, but some Summer Islanders helped them back to Old Town. Go watch our video about Sothorios and the East. As for Alyssa, she vanished to the west, still searching for lands beyond the Sunset Sea. She was never seen again. Except. Decades later, a famous mariner called Corlys Velaryon visited a shy in the far, far east. And there, he glimpsed an old and weathered ship that he said could only have been Sun Chaser, Alyssa's ship. So maybe Alyssa made it all the way across the world. She could have seen new lands and crossed the Americas before arriving at a shy from the east. And one theory goes further. In Book 2, Daenerys meets Quaithe, a shadowbinder from a shy. And Quaithe says, to go north you must journey south, to reach the west you must go east. Just like Elyssa goes west to reach the east. So some fans speculate that Quaithe is Elyssa that she learned magic in Ashai and lengthened her life, just like Melisandre of Ashai lengthens her life. Maybe the reason why Quaith Lyssa helps Daenerys is because she reminds her of Raina, the dragon queen who Elyssa once loved. The whole reason why Quaith comes to Danny in the first place is to see her dragons, the dragons that hatched from the eggs that Elyssa stole. So this is just speculation, but it's possible that Alyssa Farman still lives as a 250-year-old magician with a cool mask and a love for geography. It's also possible that Alyssa just died at sea or on some unknown land. But what we do know is that Alyssa rebelled against her family and loved a dragon queen. She travelled across Westeros and beyond, following a dream to see sights yet unseen. And maybe rebellious Arya could do the same. Like Alyssa, she could reject the life that others chose for her. She could escape the violence and horror that she suffered. Like Alyssa, Arya could sail west, chasing the sun. Of course, circumnavigating the globe takes more than an adventurous spirit. Naval navigation without modern technology involves a lot of math, geometry, trigonometry, astronomy. But people have done it for thousands of years. The ancient Greeks accurately calculated the size of the Earth. Columbus and Magellan knew that the world was round. Maybe Alyssa Farman did too, and that's how she knew there was land to the west. Maybe Alyssa Farman used Brilliant. Brilliant is a learning site with interactive challenges teaching maths and science. It's better than a lecture or video because it has you actually solving problems yourself at your own pace with guides and solutions to help you through. It starts with basic stuff, then more advanced, then whatever this is. 
With Brilliant, you can find out. It's surprisingly easy and fun to learn all the concepts that you missed at school, and to become a little bit smarter each day. Sign up for free at brilliant.org slash altshiftx. The first 200 people get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Thanks to patrons Tom Salt, Will Devon, Rebecca Radillo, Katie Balfour, Jennifer, Sarah Hefferon, Rain Fernandez, Nico Greasehaber, and Lurking Tyler. Cheers.